Heidi ho, it is Friday. Sep no, October 1st. Wow. 2021. I actually said it. October. Dang. But anyway, this is Friday, October, and October 1st, and it is 9.40 a.m. Lovely morning, cool, sunny, 63 degrees. Started out cloudy, but now the sun has come out. And I believe that this is supposed to go up to almost 90 today. But at 9.40 a.m., we're going to see what is the most fragranced orchid in my collection right now. And we're outside. And let's just start. And I'm right here in front of this. So let's give it a smell. And it is very, what I call high pitch, floral, but it's with a chemically, very influenced by sort of a chemical that's not quite off-putting, but it is there, but kind of matches the flower in general because the flower is kind of jarring, very in your face. That's why I kind of have it under the canopy of that right now to give it a little shade and so it's not so, bam. But the fragrance is lovely. Let's move on. <clears throat> okay. Let's try Brasavala. Cucalata. And really, I wasn't expecting much. This was only open a couple of days, well, a day, really, and typically they're more of a night fragrant flower. And there's a bud not open. Let's try this perenni, perennii. And there is a sweet sort of a powdery scent, but nothing, nothing that is distinguishes it to make it any more enticing than that. So let's keep moving. Let's not pass this Encyclia Placata, which I don't think has a scent, not from the literature and not from that flower. In fact, it stays true. Uh, let me see if I can pull down. Although I don't think it was fragrant last week, we'll still give it a try on the Hoku Don. Nope. Oh. Hoku Gem, rather. Freckles. And let's keep moving. Okay. Looking up and around. Looks like. This is just opened. And this is, I know this is the BLC Kosh Wallace. And there is not a fragrance yet, but like it just opened. And the tag here, BC Kosh Wallace, Little Stars, Tons Cotabel. Okay, let's, for good measure, let's try this. Phoenicia. And it is dead on it, dead, dead on arrival as far as fragrance, making sure I'm not missing anything. The Kiku, I don't believe. I'll just take it down anyway. Nope. And there's two more buds over there. Let's try this Venetia, which is the dark variety, brownie crust with the Pablo. And oh, that is intense, very fragrant, very much still like the fresh opening of a jar of that cocoa powder, Nestle. That, I would say, that's almost better than that one because this seems a little more natural, if you get my drift, but it's just as intense. Um, I 
did get this little baby over here. And I'm gonna give it a sniff. And this smells more just like Pledge. Exactly like Pledge. And that is Polestar Times No Dosa. Exactly like Pledge. Um, yeah, I tried that. Those are spent. This really never really developed into anything, which is supposed to be, uh, uh, what? Trick or treat times no dosa, which I don't know. There's no orange in there. So let's go on here to Trichocentrum Nanum, which is really sweet. It is really the same uh, fragrance as the Cotabat cross down there. Very sugary, sweet, very intense. There's going to be a contest today as far as fragrance, let me tell you. I almost think this still probably is better, but we will see in the end. I won't even give that a try. It's crinkled up. Let's pull down the Miyaka stars and see what's happening. And there is no fragrance there. Shockingly. Yeah, but let's keep moving. Let's try this. This is the Hawaiian kaleidoscope, and the flower is looking a little past, but we're gonna do it anyway. And it is like, it is almost a savory. Savory, but there's a very floral scent to that. That is very beautiful. I love it. I love it. So, Hawaiian Kaleidoscope is in the running with a single flower. Can you believe it? But I don't know. This, it's hard to compete against this. Although, hmm. I think this is much better. This is almost like in a, a very expensive lotion. I want to say like Estelot. My mom used to wear this. It was by Estelotter and it was in, it was like this green line, not Estelotter. It was fashion, was it fashion fair? I think it was fashion, was it, is there a fashion? Yeah, had to be fashion fair because it had to be. And it isn't that in, now I'm getting confused, but it, it smells just like the lotion. Or maybe Avon is what I'm thinking of. Avon, my mom and my grandmother used to get Avon. A particular kind of lotion that they had forever. And I think it was in a green kind of a squeeze container. Anyway, that's what it smells like. But it's really nice. It has a little bit of something. I can't remember what that scent is. I wish I could. Hmm. Hmm. Something very familiar in there, but what I've described so far is very accurate. Um, and I'm still torn. So let's just keep moving because we still have inside to go. And I'm pretty sure those spent flowers are spent and some water. Um, I don't think there's any flowers around <coughs> besides the ones that are down here. And this is really nice. Hmm, another contender. Another beauty. 
which would be the, um, I think that's Neo Phoenician Falcata crossed with Papilianthe, uh, what does that say? Torres. So you can see it is uh, one of those Tourette style band uh, types. Very pretty flower with that spur. Let me give this another sniff. There's the flower. Actually, this one back here looks more freshly opened. It's very light and powdery, but it's got like an alcoholy, you know, like the perfume alcohol that is in the background. That flower, I probably assume it's gone. Well, it's floral. That's about it. Um, so, I don't think there's anything else here. Really. Buds. But, nothing else. And it's this one. Maybe with this. It's gotta be sun. Okay, I don't think Kabiki is fragrant, although, let me, I've been fooled before, so there it wasn't, and let's go back over so we can figure out, we haven't even been inside, but I don't think there's anything inside, but yeah, we gotta check, and I'm gonna bring this when I come back out to compare. And so, yeah, down there, I believe everything is still developing. And back this way, I'm pretty sure that my Kaneko here is not fragrant. No, it's not. So there, I tried it. And that's about it. I'm going to bring these out, give them more sun. This is a... Uh, uh, BC Miami, if you can believe that. Okay, so anyway, let's just go on down. And I can see now that I did it again, which is leaving plants in water overnight. But I can deal with that another time. We are looking at blooms. And there are a lot of blooms in the greenhouse. So... We are going to figure out the most fragrance in here. And then I'll bring it outside and we'll match it up to those that we've already kind of deemed the most fragrance out there. And as I walk in, I wanna make sure I didn't pass any contestants. This in some water because I just do. But we're looking for blooms, no blooms here. Uh, none down there. Let's smell this. And it does have a scent which is. It's a powdery, soft, but very faint. Let's go down here and try this Venosa, Phalaenopsis Venosa. Yes, it is fragrant, very musky. Whew, that's overpowering. That really almost hurts my nose. So let's keep that in mind. I think I am getting a headache right now already, just from the scent in here it's overpowering but I gotta get on with it because this is Friday's most fragrance and I am bound and determined to crown some orchid deemed most fragrance okay nothing there let's try this one very very faint 
Okay, so there was nothing here. Um, this really just opened, so I don't really expect a smell as of yet. But it will. This is my Philanopsis Elizabeth Taylor, which is Yang Yang Blueberry times whatever that says. Something. I can't read it. But that's it, Elizabeth Taylor. Okay, no, no fragrance at this time. Let's go on down to Philanopsis Alberia. Nice, long, full, no fragrance on this spike. And I don't, that is surprising because it's got pokra. You would think that it would have big fragrance. This is the other Alberia. And that is really nice sweet, uh, perfumey. That smells like a rose. That's what it smells like. Dump a little of that water out. Okay. I don't like the yellowing, but that was probably because it was a little too much water, maybe. Uh, anyway, let's look at the flowers. You've already smelled that. That is nice. Um, let's go ahead and smell this while we're up here. I doubt if it has a fragrance, but we're going to smell it all the same. And no, there is no fragrance. And it's kind of a shame. It looks like a lot of those buds are blasting that are yet to open. So, oh well. I enjoyed it while it lasted. Now let's go back over this way. And... Let's start here with no fragrant Phalaenopsis. I am sure that I will skip over that. No go to twinkle. Let's try this. And that has zero fragrance. None. Let me try this other flower just for measure. No, none. Okay, let's try Yang Yang Blueberry. Beautiful. Still very much uh, fruit, berry, intense, really. And look, you can see this. I really need to get to this today to save this from the uncertain death. Okay, so Yang Yang Blueberry. I think Venosa Steel is more fragrant because you have to put your nose up there on the yin yang blueberry whereas venosa catches you before you get there so let's just keep on moving don't stop fight the hand of time okay i don't think any of these looks nice though they are not fragrant my corner survives uh, nothing up here okay we're down here at the fragrant corner and here we are with Samurai crossed with Chingling Happy Queen. Really, really nice. Soft, Bellina-esque. I still say Venosa beats that. Here is the Violacea. Really sweet, but faint. Look how that spike. Maybe it wasn't. Anyway, I'm not gonna worry about that. Freya flowers. This is back here. Here is my Chingling Happy Queen. Oh, that is very, very intensely strong. Very gassy. That is straight like chemical, almost like oil. Like a, like some sort of a factory. That smells like a petrol factory. That's not great. That's not so good. And I am gonna have to put some crown, some um, dragon's blood. I'm not sure. It doesn't even have any water, but I have to keep my eye on that. And now this down here, which I think is just my my Bellina that had the cerulea, because 
I think my red, this is my other Belina down there. So these are Belinas. And there is really very, very faint. Um, so I won't even count that. Okay. So just a peek down here. Yeah, there's nothing. Just pretty flowers. So, what is the most fragrantest flower in here? I would say... I would say... Actually, let me try this one down here. I haven't even gone down here. Um, and we do have... Tetraspis coffee. Which surprisingly has no fragrance at this moment. So, back to the question of the day. The most fragrantest orchid in here is Phalaenopsis venosa. Right here. Yes, which is definitely a savory. It's got lots of musk and funk, but there's a floral, like grassy, herbaceous quality there that's very pleasing. And it all blends well to make a very uh, pleasant. Okay. Ready to take on Carbeck times she gets box. Let's try it. Mm. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, I'm gonna take a breather and do another test. Reverse. Okay. That was more like a cleaning product, more than sweet. Whereas this is sweet all the way with that musky, funky uh, complexity that is really on point. So that one defeated that. So let's move on down to the other contenders of this competition. We've got here Hawaiian Kaleidoscope. Oh, that is glorious, that is glorious. I almost, mm, okay, they're totally different. That is definitely complex, funky, musky, this. Is more like a spice cake. A spice cake. That's what it is. It's all spice or nutmeg. That's what it is. And also it does have a little bit of some kind of a cleaner on the back end um, that is familiar as well, or that lotion that I was talking about. Um, but it's very, very florally, but it does have that nutmeggy spice cake scent. Um, it's tough. Let's go back here. Give this a smell. I don't even think that was in the running because I don't smell anything. So, in lieu of all of that, let's check this Nanum out. And actually, Nanum now is really kicking it out, but hmm, this still beats Nanum. Venosa beats Nanum. 
And let's check this one out next to Venosa. And I think Venosa is probably strictly because it is very intense. And in a way, although it is complex, it is straightforward. And it about there is where it gets you. This, it's beautiful and it looks exactly like it smells, but you have to get your nose all the way in the throat. I can't imagine this being a wafty, fragrant type of orchid. I believe this will be one that you will miss it if you don't put your nose there. So therefore, on the basis of that determination, and without any other contestants coming out of the woodwork to contest, I would say, without further ado, Phalaenopsis Venosa is the most famous Thank you.